We are Olivier Levillain and Pierre Chifflier. Um, we work for the ANSI, the Agence Nationale de la Sécurité des Systèmes d'Information. In English, it translates to French Network and Information Security Agency. Uh, I have been working uh, there for uh, eight years, uh, first in the laboratories, and uh, this year I have been, uh, uh, I have changed and uh, I work in the training center now. Uh, I am a PhD student since uh, 2011. <laughs> okay, I should, uh, I think I have something to, to do uh, this year, but uh, I'm not sure. And uh, okay, I also uh, worked on the languages since uh, 2007 uh, in, the, in ANSI. Um, hello. So I'm Pierre Chifflier. Well, I'm going to do that uh, fast because I mean it's not really that interesting. So I work also for the NC uh, from systems to network to many things. I, I do some stuff in many different areas, starting from BIOS to languages, compilers, and many kind of stuff. So, well, we'll see. Okay, so NC, just a word. Uh, a, our work is to uh, raise the security level in, uh, in France, uh, and we uh, target governmental entities, companies, and the general public. And in France, uh, we have a separation between the Intel uh, agency and the security agency, the NC. So we did not do Babar. It's not us. Sorry. In short, we are, we are like the three or four letter agencies, but we are the good guys. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so why, why are we here to, to, to speak about languages? Uh, back in 2005, uh, the ANSI, it was not the same name at the, at the time, was asked a question about whether Java was uh, a good language to write secure, security products. Uh, the question was a good one, and in fact, we, we, we tried to uh, broaden it uh, across years, and um, we had some questions. Which one, which uh, language is better than the other? And which criteria would, would we like to, to look at? Should we forbid, discourage, recommend, or require some uh, constructions of uh, a particular language? And if we, had to, if we could uh, start from a clean slate, what would we like to, to get? So at, at the time, and still today, we think a uh, few people uh, considered the question um, in a in, a, in such a broad way. So this presentation is about uh, examples in languages and the, the impact of the language, some constrictions on the uh, security. Um, we have uh, a, a broad spectrum of examples in different languages. Uh, if you need more uh, information on the subject, we, we uh, had two studies from uh, since 2005 called JavaSec and LaFosec. The first one is about Java, as you could imagine. The second one is about the functional languages. And uh, what was fun is that at the start of each study, we had trouble um, getting the uh, academics or the, uh, the other partners uh, in the consortium to understand what our concerns were. So that's what we, we are trying to, 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 to present today. Uh, before uh, beginning, the following examples uh, do not aim at criticizing a particular languages, uh, except for JavaScript, of course, uh, and no languages were harmed during the work. So during the, the presentation, you might experience different stages. Uh, okay, you, you know them. Uh, it's, it's logical that some things uh, seem to be strange. Some other you, 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 you won't believe it. So sometimes you will try to uh, think that we, we, we were mistake, mistaken, but uh, we tried all the, the examples and they are real. So first, uh, some illustrations. It's the mo most of the, the presentation is about illustrations, and we're beginning with the elephant in the room, JavaScript. I'll start by giving a few examples. So. Um, besides the uh, serious question, is uh, a language better than another to write secure things? Um, <coughs> we started to collect uh, stupid examples in any language. So, you know, there were stupid things across the internet. Internet is full of stupid things. Uh, we like that. So we started collecting them and uh, we started studying them to try to understand why that happens. And believe me, we are still not done with that. Uh, so, for example, in JavaScript, you have comparisons between things. Everything can be written in JavaScript, everything. It's 
does not have especially a meaning, but it will get executed. The browsers or whatever always find a way to execute things. So if you write stupid things, like for example, comparing um, a number and a, a character, it will say, for example, that it's equal. But if you do the same thing with another construction or, uh, of an used switch, it will say the, the comparison, the same comparison, will just not be uh, equal. So this is a start of the wondering. Uh, how could that happen? Because that really means that uh, the language is not really uh, understanding the principles of uh, mathematics correctly. Well, we can do more things with that. For example, if you compare characters to numbers, well, let's say it's true. If you compare a number to some kind of float and coding, it will say true also. But if you compare two strings, it will say that it's not. In mathematics, that means it's not transitive, that equality is not transitive. And usually, when you're uh, angry with mathematics, uh, things can get worse later. We'll see some examples of stuff like that later. We'll start by very obvious examples. The, some of the next uh, examples have been found in real life code, and some of them have lead to exploits and vulnerabilities. So if these ones are very obvious, don't get uh, impatient right now. Uh, you're going to have more uh, intelligent examples. For the same thing, you can say, for example, the plus operator. Um, you could expect that it's uh, not really uh, uh, commutat commutative, but you would expect it to be uh, associative. So depending on the order you pass arguments with the plus sign, you will get different results. Uh, in, one, in one of these three additions, um, JavaScript decides that it must happen the numbers before uh, uh, adding them. In the other uh, two, it decides that it must add the integers before uh, appending it to a string. So this already means that there are something strange happening. So we starting well testing more stuff. So we <laughs> asked some stupid question about can we compare anything? Yes, we can. Does it, give, does it give interesting results? Um, yes, for some definition of interesting. So the equal sign means that, uh, for example, if you uh, look at the uh, numbers on, on the diagonal, you would expect it to be true, except a few of them. But you can see that some values are not equal to themselves. That is a bit surprising. So the right. equality is neither transitive, ni either uh, reflexive. Amongst that, for example, an empty array is not equal to itself. So when you start comparing things, that gives interesting results. But the comparison is not only that. For example, we tried uh, lesser on equal. Well, it gives even more uh, interesting. It could even... Uh, draw some kind of logo or whatever. But you have some stuff, for example, the minus one uh, encoded as a string that gives interesting comparisons right now. Um, we did the same for uh, strict lesser and for greater uh, than. And believe me, if you uh, display this kind uh, fast, you will see that you have values that are uh, greater or equal, that are lesser or equal, but are not equal. Also very interesting. So JavaScript is a new branch of mathematics. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, that, that, that was us uh, tearing uh, some kind of blood tears. Uh, you would find that funny uh, until people decided that crypto in JavaScript was a really pretty cool idea because everyone has a brother. Yeah, right. Uh, so you now have uh, many... Uh, implementation uh, of uh, very critical uh, crypto operations, manipulating all your uh, private keys that are done using this language. Um, please stop it. Do not implement crypto in JavaScript. We're going back to, to more uh, civilized uh, languages. Uh, OK, first shell. Uh, so this is a, a trivial example of uh, a bug if you write uh, a comparison in, in, uh, in, in shell. You try to, to compare uh, what the uh, user has typed to the uh, secret 
pin code. And uh, you used to, to, to think that only um, digits could be typed, so you use the uh, dot, the um, dash NE operator. So what happens if you, you, you uh, write a good, the good code, it's OK. If you write a, uh, a wrong number, it's OK. But if you write anything non-numeric, or even the empty string, you will be, you will, your, the access will be granted. So what happened here is that the exceptional case, the error case, was uh, grouped with the else in the else with the uh, authenticated case. So th this is a, a stupid example, but uh, bear with me. Uh, this, as a matter of fact, it's exactly one bug we had in GNU TLS last year. Uh, the other go to fail. You must have heard about the Apple go to fail, but there was another one. And it was exactly the same thing that, it, that I just described. It was a function that would return zero if the uh, s um, certificate had been passed and was validated using the signature. It was my, uh, one if the signature was invalid, but it was minus one if there was an error during the passing. So if you use if, the, the, the re if and directly the result of the function, you have exactly the case I described earlier. What's more interesting is that the same, the same bug uh, existed um, six years ago, uh, six years earlier in uh, OpenSSL. So y you could say that developers never, never learn, but it's also that maybe the language doesn't help you. Uh, if, you have, if you want to have a Boolean that is two values, maybe you should use a real Boolean and not an integer. Okay, so you all, you all have heard, I, I, I suppose, about Hardblade which was uh, a way to, to, uh, to, to, to get to the private keys. So here again, the C language was uh, um, in part responsible because it doesn't help you to, 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 to check the bounds of an array. So of course, you, 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 you know the um, uh, consequences of the hard bleed um, vulnerability. And the code was a simple uh, out um, buffer overflow in a, in a reading uh, instruction. And you also have the C code that didn't help you and the use of uh, uh, traditional um, uh, tools and compilers with the go-to-fail, this, this time the uh, Apple go-to-fail. It's, it's funny because all these bugs um, w arose uh, in 2014 in uh, just uh, a, few, uh, a few months. Mm. Message to people writing static, an static analysis tools. Uh, this one is uh, obvious uh, dead code. Uh, at that time that was written, there was not so many tools uh, warning about that kind of dead code. And it's still not in the compiler uh, a solved problem. So our question is again and again, um, well, the tools could help you also. To, to write less errors. I, I know errors are good for some people because it provides uh, jobs and uh, security experts and so on. Uh, but uh, sometimes it could be good that the tools uh, would help you uh, find this kind of bugs. And the last one, uh, an another real bug, that uh, another real um, vulnerability that could have been a major bug that was a proposed uh, patch in the kernel, Linux kernel uh, source code. And if you look at it um, uh, quickly, you might not see the, the problem, but the problem is you have an equal sign and not equal equal, which again, isn't very uh, easy to spot if, if the compiler doesn't help you. Uh, hopefully most compilers help you now. And uh, here you, you, you just, by adding these two lines in the, in the right function, in the right syscall, you could have a, a backdoor, an easy backdoor that uh, would be uh, triggered using uh, a curious set of, uh, of uh, options. OK, so another language uh, that uh, we, we usually use when uh, dealing with uh, um, development is Java. So uh, when we look at equality, equality is, is very, very complex uh, stuff in computer science when you, when you try, it, try to understand it from the uh, uh, theoretical perspective, but it's also uh, difficult in many languages, apparently. So you, you have these uh, integers that you try to compare. Okay, sometimes you, you, you do not have the equality that you think you had, but maybe if you compare two uh, 
two integers that have the same value, you would like them to be equals in some way. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the first one is true. So if I create two integers uh, with the same value and this value is 42, the result is they are equal for the equal equal, uh, that is the physical equality uh, test. But it's not true anymore for 1000. So who wants to guess why? Okay, so the, the, the answer is. Okay, so Java reuses the integer object. That, that's strange, but they use a cache. Uh, there are some cache for the integer, job, integer object that are less than, I think it's between minus 128 <laughs> and yeah. 127, so just. Uh, in, in Java, integers are equal up to 127. Uh, Besides that, they are not equal anymore. The, yeah, the reason is there is a cache. Okay, so maybe you can understand it. But our point is, uh, do Should all the developer, developer have to know yeah, that? Do the developer has to understand that? And you get extra points if you understand that using reflection you can poison this cache. And using uh, implicit conversions, for example, you can even poison any more uh, more things. Like for example, printing uh, addition of integers because it, they will get implicitly cast to the class integer and then using the cache that would have been poisoned. So uh, yes, Java use a cache, but do the developer need to understand that, really? Again, in Java, uh, another cool example. Uh, you, you might find more, uh, I think I, I forgot to, to, to add the reference, but there is a, a, cool, a cool book on Java, it's Java Puzzlers. You have a lot of such uh, enigmas and you have to, 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 to guess what the result is bit before turning the page. So, okay, obviously the result is uh, the program will print bad things happen because uh, we have uh, an open bracket, then uh, two, two slashes that open um, a, command, a command, but then you, you, all, you, you have zero A, so okay. We are back to the, the 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 new line, and then you have 7D, which is the bracket that's the closing bracket, and 7B, the opening brackets. So of course this will print bad things happen. So you might not know that the UTF um, um, uh, entities are processed before uh, the compila the compilation. Yeah and. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, you might notice that there is one language we did not say anything <laughs> about right now. So this is my preferred. So th this is also a picture of uh, uh, of me. Um PHP will go will come back on this presentation. So uh let me start by a simple uh try test. You have uh, a string. So these are uh, characters. You try to increment it by one and print it. And then you try again, but this time using the uh, pre-incrementation uh, operator three times. So what do we have? So the result for the first is three. Wow, surprising. It's kind of you choose one number in the string, you increment it, and you trash the remaining. Why not? Let's try following. So the following is even more interesting because the first means that it's kind of incremented the string considering as an hex number, right? Why not? We try another time. Okay, so this is not a hex number because we would have 2DA. We have 2E. Zero, which means it has done some kind of addition on decimal base. With the carry, with the carry. Then use the carry on the hexadecimal uh, number that has no sense. And you, we have a string. Huh? I mean, we have a string, not a hex number as a result. And the third time is even even more interesting because we get three. So why three? Any guess? 
because yeah. two, two E0 is a float, of course. So PHP yes, is considered two E0 as a float and then incremented by one. So it's three as, as a float because three uh, without the point zero is a float, of course. Uh, we tried to understand. We tried. OK, I'll talk about more language, more different languages. Um, First Perl, okay, you might have seen this. It was presented by uh, researchers at the last uh, CCC. Uh, okay, we, we, we will consider uh, a request, a SQL, SQL request used in a web application. And uh, because the developer is con conscious, he, he would use the uh, uh, quote um, method that will uh, escape the quote character. So, of course, if I use this uh, and try to uh, put a quote in, 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 in my username, it will behave correctly and escape the quote. So good for, good for the developer, it's, it's perfect. OK, now uh, I, am, I try another thing and I add another username. So user equals and all the quotes I want. And user e equals, equals three. OK, this, this, this time the CGI param user is not only a string. It's an array containing two strings. So we have changed types. No, it's normal. We, no problem. But now, if we, we look at the code, uh, since we have an array and uh, we, we are trying to, to, to use this in a context in the second line, we, we, we can uh, have the array be um, seen as not one, uh, one array, but two values. So I had one argument, and now it's two. So that's uh, a, a real problem, because that would say that the quote will um, get two arguments instead of one. OK, so for now, it seems not to be a problem. But I tried to use three, that is SQL numeric, as the second argument. So now I have a quote that is called with my string, and an argument that would say to the quote method, don't do anything because it, it's a number. Uh -huh. So, for for the young guys not speaking Perl fluently, uh, it means that the uh, arrow base underscore is expanded as three different values instead of two. So you are able to overwrite uh, the type variable that would not be overridden uh, in other case. So that means we did overwrite the type variable, and since. There is a security test on the type just uh, right after. Uh, then it gets into the problem that Olivier is describing. So in this case, type confusion, that is the fact that we had one array of two values becoming two values, it, it, inside the language is very bad. And it leads to uh, real security issues. A solution would be to test in every function you have, oh, OK, is it really one uh, string or is it an array of string? So again, is it the um, job of the developer to uh, uh, work hard to compensate the, the, the lack of guarantees from the, the language? Because I would like to, to simply say I have transmitted one argument, and it's understood as one argument. Final point. So, OK, Python now. I like this one. Uh, Python is a great language with a lot of expressivity. and. One construction you might know is the comprehension lists. Um, in this case, I have a simple comprehension list when, where I use uh, uh, the construction to, to, to add one to every uh, element of a list. So the question is, if I write this uh, kind of stuff, how, uh, what, what, what is S after, after this uh, construction? OK, it's three. It shouldn't. It really shouldn't. Because if you had done the same thing using map, which uh, semantically is exactly the same thing, you would not expect this S to be uh, uh, defined elsewhere, to, be, uh, to, to, to go out of its scope. And as a matter of fact, it was uh, fixed in, the, in Python 3. Yeah, it so was in Python 3, that doesn't work anymore. <laughs> yeah, and that's, but they could because nobody uses it. But, but No, it's no, no, no. No, no, no. that is a local variable. <laughs> if 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 you show this, if you show this uh, to to every computer science 
people, uh, they will say, okay, in, in, the, in, in both cases, S is bound. It's a bound variable. And they, they fixed it. They fixed it, so they believe it. Okay, that's interesting, but I'm shocked it was, it was there in the first place. <laughs> that's why I, I, I don't write Python anymore. No, that's not true. Okay, uh, still in Python, uh, you can use uh, almost anything in an if to, to check um, if it's defined or it's, if it's zero or I don't know. So if you write uh, some code to uh, check that uh, you have a start time and end time and the current time is between both of them, you might want to, to, to check that the, the arguments are defined. So you use if start time and end time and then if they are both defined, you will uh, compare the current time with, uh, with them. So if I use this with uh, today, if I could do, do, do this today, you, you can do this on your laptop, uh, with this function, and uh, I use start time e equals to uh, 11 p.m. and uh, uh, end time equals to, to midnight, what should it return? It should return true, of course, because, because midnight is false. Midnight is false. So the if in line three returns false, and I go directly to the last line. So that's, th that was interesting because it, uh, uh, it started a long discussion on Python, on Python mailing lists. Uh, so OK, you have reference, and uh, we will put the, uh, the, the slides if you want to, 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 to know more. <laughs> OK. Or oh, this one is, is more fun than, than really. Uh, uh, oh. we, we didn't try to make it uh, really uh, a problem in 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 a, in, a more, in, a, in a complex context, but it's interesting that if you have a tuple with containing an iterable and you try to uh, update uh, the iterable inside the tuple, you have an error that say no no you can't do that, but it's it's done. It's done on demand nonetheless. The variable was modified. So we're speaking to security guys, right? Uh, you know that it, well, it could be interesting to make tests before doing the action, right? That doesn't, of course, this, this example is not uh, a security problem, but it shows that there are strange, really strange things happening in the Python engine. Oh, OK. <laughs> Uh, okay, and Ruby. Um, in Ruby, you have uh, two, two um, uh, functions open that uh, seem to, to do the same thing, or almost. Uh, that is open a file. And there is just a little quirk that is the first one, the kernel open. Okay, uh, I would have thought it was file open. But also allows you to use the pipe as a first character in the string. So if you have a file name beginning with a, with, with a pipe, the, the idea is to execute the, the, the command. And uh, the open result is the um, uh, standard output of the, uh, of the shell command uh, that resulted in the, uh, in the pipe, in the, the, the command. So this uh, means that if you have uh, the, a, um, an, um, a file with a name beginning with a, with a pipe, depending on which module you have open, be it kernel or file, you will have a very different um, uh, result. And this, as a matter of fact, it um, resulted in, in, I think, in uh, several CVs in, uh, I don't really recall, I think it was in um, FTP servers or uh, HTTP servers that would use um, the output to, to create a file. That is, when you, 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 would want, you, you, you wanted to save a file, it would use the, the, the file name you, you got from the internet. And using the open, it would lead to code execution. Yeah. <coughs> also, please note that the function you reading the pipe and interpreting it is kernel.open, not file.open. So it means that the function that aims to be the closer to the kernel as possible is the one doing the higher level stuff. Interesting, also. Ah, yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, uh, I can't say it's me that time. Um, uh, well, we'll, we'll... It's Halloween to tomorrow, I think, <laughs> now. Yeah. 
uh, we'll be trying to get uh, people mad at us in almost every language. So uh, if you're still not mad at, for, uh, at us at the end of this talk, uh, we have a problem. Uh, but still, PHP, uh, really interesting. This is a commonly used module, right? A very commonly used module to upload files. But it has a very interesting way of fixing the uh, integer overflow because in case of 32 bits hosts, uh, a overflow can, an overflow can happen and then size can be lesser than zero. And the way to fix it is to do some kind of black magic, adding two times PHP int max plus one if someone has an explanation. <laughs> Please raise I think the, hand. the fact that it's 2.0 uh, uh, is to make it be a float. Yeah, I think it's trying to make it uh, sound like a float so the overflow does not happen and then returning it. And I don't know how it will get interpreted later because, okay, it was a float, but it can be inter interpreted as an integer. Oh, hell, whatever. Uh, this code, if you search, uh, substring of that uh, in Google or whatever, uh, you will find tons of uh, real-life uh, projects using that. Yeah, if you switch, yeah. if you switch if to the operands, <laughs> may, may, maybe you will have something different. Yeah, sure. That's, that's the beauty of it. So, um, okay, we have spoken about a lot of languages, but some of uh, some of you might know that at ANSI we like one language in particular very much. It's OCaml. So <laughs> we also have examples in OCaml. Yeah, because we are French, we like OCaml. Uh, and because, well, uh, we were trying to test it to see if it's really better than the other languages. And well, we found some stuff. For example, in, well, code is static. For example, you don't have any buffer overflow or stuff like that, which is nice for a language aiming for being strict and having some kind of security. Uh, but strings, by default, are n mutable. So it means that in that example, for example, um, check C returns either OK or KO. We run a first call to this function. We put that into F, and then we write into F uh, O and then K. Since the result uh, should be K, we used check false, uh, we write into the string that was returned. So in a really functional language, no problem, because we have a copy of the string and we write on it, right? But in fact, no uh, strings in OCaml that aims to be uh, some functional language are returned by reference. So if we write in a string that modifies every later use of this string, which is not really nice for functional language. Uh, so we wondered, could it be used for some kind of security problems? So this example uh, will be um, on a function from the standard library of OCaml. So it's not our function, it's the standard library. We do the same. We convert false into a string, we modify it, and then we print it. And then the string is indeed modified. So even the standard library is affected. So, well, it's not only fun, because the problem is you can modify almost everything that is uh, uh, well, used as a string, as a constant string, like, for example, exceptions, uh, pattern matching, and the car dot escaped function, which is a security function that is used to escape characters and to be sure that you won't have any um, quotes, or quotes or whatever, you just change the returns of this function and then you, you can return the same as the character that should have been escaped. So there is no escape anymore and then you can use as a way to defeat the security even in OCaml. So uh, I think the word in English, the Care Bear, uh, we, try, we kind of killed the Bisounours, the Care Bear. Um, also, I would like to notice that there are uh, some kind of strange things happening. For example, in OCaml, you have strong typing, which does not mean uh, presses the keys stronger. It does mean that a type cannot be compared to another type without casting it uh, explicitly. In that case, you create a module, crypto, 
where you add a value which is uh, ID, uh, val, no, ID. ID. ID, and then you hide another value inside which is key. The value the, of key is hidden, you cannot access it, and you have no way to do so. Except that uh, the compare function in OKMO is polymorphic, which means writing another module which has almost the same signature and the same ID, for example. We can try the key, for example, from zero. We write a module that has the same ID and a value, and we compare it. We can't see what's uh, inside the module crypto, but we can compare it to something. So by using simple comparison, we uh, extract the value of the box using a simple algorithm. So this, sorry? No, you can no because you have the the comparison, so you can do a dichotomy. A dichotomy it's comparison. just a simple dichotomy, and it works great. <laughs> also, I would like to emphasize that for a language that aims to be strict, uh, it has a really annoying problem. On 32-bit uh, machine, it does not hang handle integer overflow, and there is no uh, exception, no whatever. So for a strict language, that is a bit uh, uh, annoying. And also, uh, in OCaml, integers that not go to 2 to the uh, 32, but only to, only to uh, 2 to the 30 minus 1 and minus 2 to 31. That means one bit is used by the garbage collector. So integers in OCaml cannot go to 2 to 32, but only to 2 to 31. That is the hell of a an annoyance when you're writing uh, something that has to um, send commands to the system because minus one <laughs> is a lot of F and it cannot be encoded in native OCaml. And every integer is signed. Well, oh, right, okay. <laughs> so it's really not me this time. Um, so why do we care? Well, let's play a simple game. We do hashes of uh, random strings, uh, or <coughs> not so random, uh, and even a SHA-1. You, you shall not use SHA-1 anymore, remember. But anyway, neither MD5. Um, so the equal equal uh, function from PHP is kind of the same as uh, JavaScript. It's great. It has nice features of doing uh, whatever crap it wants to. So. Are some of these strings equal in respect to the equal equal comparison? Some of them, none of them, all of them? So the answer is D, all of them. All of them. As you can see, the hashes are not uh, random. They have a specific uh, writing form. There is a number of zeros, there is an E, and there are some numbers. No hex, uh, no A, B, C, A to F uh, value. Well, PHP has a really interesting way of comparing strings because we have strings on left and on right sides of the equal equal operators, so it should be compared using the string type. Okay, for anyone writing a compiler, when you have string types, you compare using the type. But PHP, before comparing, comparing strings, decide to test if it can compare it as integers, before comparing it as strings. So all of them are true, and that leads to a certain number of real-world uh, collisions. These are not real crypto collisions, of course. But this has led to some problems uh, in a lot of PHP forums uh, in the password reset function because the password that was generated was exactly of the form uh, just up of the slide. So any other password uh, also hashed giving the same kind of number was working. You have a lot of real password working. And of course, PHPBB was also affected, but it's kind of a feature of PHPBB to test every new exploit before the others. Right? So now, uh, well, we are laughing about the languages. We are making friends because they like uh, their languages, and they're telling us uh, that uh, we are uh, uh, just annoying them. But what can we do now? Meaning. Is, is it really the, f the, the problem only of the developer? 
Um, we have a, a longer version of the, the this talk, and we had a, a, a paper uh, published last year, and in which we we, we wanted to to tell people that the code and the the, the writing it is just a step. You also have to 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 work before the specification step and after. That is until the runtime environment. So just um, I think uh, we only have one example in each. So about specification, I just wanted to to show you. Uh, uh, an excerpt of the Java uh, specification about clone. So I'll let you read this and let it sink in. So it's about clone. Okay. Uh, if you, you read that, you, you you didn't get anything because it, it says, okay, do do whatever you want. Uh, clone is a cool thing. The general intent is to do that, but do whatever you want. So. What kind of specification is that? So what can you do about that? Nothing. It, it's also interesting to see that serialization uh, also have the same kind of specification in Java. So the read object and write object methods, they have the same kind of language. So that is to say, it doesn't specify anything. Yeah. If you are a developer implementing a compiler, you should not, but it can happen. Um, read that and try to implement the clone function. You cannot. There is first never uh, written anywhere, you shall do that. Anywhere, it's not written. And there is written, it should be something approaching, it's even not a requirement. So you can do whatever you want, you can format your hard drive, it will be compliant to the spec. And for the tools runtime, just an example of uh, a C code that uh, it's funny because uh, if, if you look at this, uh, if you write it, if you compile it, the first thing that will um, happen is that it will seg fault. It's logical. It's only logical because you have uh, a, a constant um, cast string and then you try to write in inside. So, okay, it seg faults, but the compiler won't say anything in a lot of cases. And that's, I think it's inexcusable because the compiler is creating, is producing code that it can statically know that will seg fault. So the program is useless. This one is useless. But never mind, it, cont it continues uh, working on it. So how do you do, do wh wh what can you do to, to avoid that? You can use the minus W write strings uh, option that everyone knows. Or you can use G++, yeah, because uh, it would seem that C there was less C++ code that would generate false positive uh, on this warning. So again, we would like the, 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 the tools we use, the compilers, the analyzers you, you, we use to help us, to help the developers. Sadly, it's not always the case. Okay. Um, yeah. So <coughs> what now? Are we doomed to <laughs> use uh, tools that are broken? Um, there is also a problem uh, at the beginning, which is uh, how do people choose a language when they have a project to write? Well, usually the answer is, the answer is um, they choose what they know, which is not that bad as an answer, but there is not even a discussion about what language should be good or not. And Usually, if they don't know anything, they, they choose a language for performance because, of course, you have to be extra performant when parsing a config file. Um, what you should do is not even that. Is You should ask yourself questions, which is, I agree, um, pretty hard. Um, what you want to do will not be the same for all languages. For example, if you do uh, network uh, performance stuff, uh, yeah, maybe Python is not really the choice uh, that is really interesting because it will be hell as slow. Uh, but when you are doing uh, parsing, for example, thinking of IDS, maybe using C to write complex parsers for PE files, whatever files, is not really the choice of the year because uh, parsing is really something sensitive. And using C to do that is uh, really, really dangerous. Uh, but you cannot use a language for everything. We are, we are aware of that. So we cannot tell you, okay, there is one language you should choose for everything. That doesn't work. Uh, so there, this is a compromise. You have to think about it and 
ask yourself, do you want performance, do you want uh, security properties or uh, not? But really, the performance cannot justify everything. Also, the language should help you. I would add as a note that, uh, please, language developers, stop adding equal signs. I mean, there is equal, 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 and then we'll, we're going to count in powers of equal right now? It, it's stupid. So the language should help you. That, that should be something interesting. Also, uh, yeah. Since you're providing us uh, some work, because we have to deal with that kind of problems, uh, we are um, well happy, but please always use the warning from the compilers. And uh, GCC has some kind of interesting uh, theory that all is not all of the flags, it's all of something. So when you use all, you have to add extra, and extra is not even all plus uh, everything, you, you still miss some flags. So I think in, in Clang you have W everything, which for, <laughs> for now is really everything. But let us wait two or three years and it will, won't be the case. Just, just a remark, if you, if you do happen to teach uh, programming, please tell that to your students. Tell them to always use the warnings because uh, I, I, I do that and now I won't accept any uh, project that won't compile with the with these warnings on because I think they should they, they, they should learn it from 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 the start and it's uh, really uh, a good thing in C but in every every language I think. Yeah. Also, the on the behavior uh, never write something quick and dirty or I I'd also say Greek and dirty uh, because that doesn't work like that. You never write something and say by saying uh, okay I'm gonna fix that later. That doesn't work. You never fix anything. And that gives vulnerabilities. So please, um, <coughs> the first code has to be tested everywhere. Write test, that's better. Also, more time thinking, less time debugging. And debugging some nice side effect tools in multi-threaded code is a hell of a nightmare. So please, if you want to avoid that, uh, also uh, think about your code. Write it uh, using simple uh, code, it would be better. So good habits can help you. Uh, test results, uh, never assume that something is always true because it's not. Uh, I mean, it's also uh, using whitelists. You can test, for example, that a value, if you expect a login name, you won't test for uh, forbidden characters. You have to test only if it's uh, ASCII, for example, and that's all. Uh, it's a way of thinking that uh, gives way less problems. Also, keep it simple. That also, that's also related to the last sentence. Uh, some people have a really cool, uh, I'd say, feature of being able to write uh, IOCCC code natively. When they write code, it's so obfuscated that you cannot understand it. IOCCC, if you don't know it, it's a, it's a really cool contest of writing the most obfuscated code that you could ever uh, find. It, it's really cool. They, they just announced the winners from this year. It's really great. Um, so when you have features of a language, no, it's not cool to think about using all of the features you can just to prove that you know the language well. No, it's not cool. It's just a nightmare because the next uh, student that will have to read your language uh, will cry tears of blood. Also, Rust programs. We did not speak about Rust because we did not have time to uh, study every new language. Thanks to uh, language developers, we have every uh, year tons of new language to study. Uh, so please stop also. Uh, but for Rust, uh, using the, macro, the macros, sometimes you end up having so many characters that it looks like ASCII art and not code anymore. It's not understandable. So you have to write code a way that it can be uh, understood by someone else uh, than you, not only you. Also, we tried to study something which is, oh, would it be pretty cool to use different languages in the same program? For example, if I take the IDS, well, you could do the parsing using a really, uh, for example, functional language, and uh, the network related stuff in a really uh, fast language as C or whatever. So it's possible, it's cool, it, it works. 
Uh, but it's way more complex than the average developer uh, can handle. Uh, sometimes it's even more dangerous because it uh, gives communications, whatever. Sometimes the models that you have to use, for example, in Python, if you use C types, it's horrible. It does, uh, it does uh, horrible things. Uh, GR security uh, will shoot it anymore every time you start a Python language because C types is trying to make some crap with your data. So sometimes, by using different languages, you have the problem of the communication between these languages. And now you have even more problems than when you started. So <laughs> it's a pretty cool idea, but hard to use it, uh, really. So I'd leave the conclusion to okay. Olivier, but I, well. Okay, we have been a little more chatty than I expected, but okay, sorry. Uh, programming language, this is, uh, we think uh, they have uh, an impact of so on software security, um, and not only because you use th um, this paradigm of or, uh, the other one, but because there are a lot of things to take into account. Uh, there is no uh, silver bullet in, uh, in, uh, in languages, but you have to know, to know them. Uh, we, we would like to have tools that help us, and uh, what we think is um, that to be a good developer, you have to know a little on your language. And that is um, why I told you about teaching. Uh, and finally, uh, I think uh, in this regard, for now, our job is safe because there is a lot of interesting languages to study uh, uh, again. Yeah, and also you can help us because uh, if you write code that is better, uh, we would have uh, less slides on the next presentation. This is only an ext this is only an extract of what we get on all languages. You can contribute if you have examples of stupid things. Please send them to us. We we like new examples. But also, if you write bugs, please be creative because we always end up on the same bugs, and it's really annoying for us. So please write creative bugs and and uh, and send us your examples. So this is uh, something you can help us. Thank you. OK, so are there any questions for the French intelligence agency? <laughs> FIA. What about Fortran? <laughs> uh, <laughs> we did not. We did not study Fortran. We did not study Ada uh, a lot because, but we should have because we have someone who worked on it. But no, Fortran we did not. Uh, the, the the agency is recruiting. We are not uh, enough to study all of the languages available. <laughs> so.